Live from the news team that believes in this valley, you're watching 33 WYTV News at 6. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Corbin Baker joined by Pinpoint Meteorologist Ryan Halicki. Ryan, we've got a lot of news to get to tonight, but first let's get a check on your forecast. It was a wacky weather day for sure in Trumbull County. I told you this down in the newsroom where I live in Trumbull County. It was raining, I mean pouring, and then it's almost like as soon as I hit the Mahoning County line, rain stopped. Well, that's I encountered some of that rain uh, across the valley here, raining hard enough you could have just taken a shower outside. Wow. You didn't even need a... Uh, you need an umbrellas rather. You can see some minor flooding showing up here in New Middletown. This is what I mean when I talk about that ponding on the roadways. You encounter water like this at a high rate of speed and that would cause you to hydroplane losing traction. So thankfully we're starting to see a lot of the heavier rain that we had earlier push out. Now things a lot more isolated. You can see a lot of lightning with that. I'm picking up on a couple of strikes here just to the southwest of the southern tier of Columbiana County. This is the next batch of rain that we have overhead. Currently a little heavy shower pushing in through West Township over toward Hanoverton and New Garden. We also have pushing towards Selineville and Summitville. A little thunderstorm here that's going to graze the southern tier of the county. So we're not done with the rain just yet. Now we have seen the sunshine peak out a bit. That's taken our temperatures back up. The rain cooled us into the 70s. But now that the sun's out in spots, we're seeing 80s return to the map. Definitely a humid night for us, and we're going to continue with that humidity overnight. A bit of a break from that from to for tomorrow, but currently spotty showers and thunderstorms. Temperatures dropping toward the mid to low 70s here by 11 o'clock. We have a few more hot days before the temperatures cool for a couple. I'll show you what to expect in that seven day forecast in just a little bit here, guys. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Ryan. In Trumbull County coverage, rescue workers have been working tirelessly through all the heat and humidity over at Mesquita Lake trying to find a missing teenager. 33 News reporter Nadine Grimley has been on the scene all day. She joins us live with the latest. Well, Corbin, the American Red Cross has been out here making sure that all the rescue workers are staying hydrate, hydrated. But despite the heat and humidity here, all 48 rescue workers have been working nonstop to try to find this missing teenager. Now, rescue crews have searched the shore in woods, including a small island by the beach area. The Mahoning County Sheriff's Office brought out their drone for its infrared technologies, and boats equipped with sonar were in the water searching too. Mosquito Lake is in a very deep lake, and the area the divers are searching at is only about seven to eight feet, but officials say it's treacherous. So it's a very, very difficult and they're getting tangled up um, and we're, they're having a difficult time. With all the seaweed and all the vegetation, it's not, it's, you can't see very deep. Yeah. So it's, you're, you're basically trying to swim through vegetation like that and Trying to now feel officials your way plan to stop the search when it becomes dark, but they say they will be resuming their search at about nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Live in Bazetta, Nadine Grimley, 33 WYTV News. All right, Nadine, thank you for that live report. Also in Trumbull County, a family in Warren is mourning the death of a baby who was found unresponsive in a swimming pool. Police first got the calls around 630 last night. The girl had stopped breathing at a house on Homewood Avenue Southeast. Emergency workers took the 15 month old to, to, uh, to Trumbull Memorial Hospital, rather, where she later died. WITV got a hold of the emotional 911 calls. Ma'am, we need to calm down. No, I can't. She's not breathing. What? She's not breathing. What's your address? 239 Homewood. 229 Homewood? 239 Homewood. Okay, how old is she? Thirteen months. Thirteen months. Fifteen. Okay. <laughs> All right, we'll get somebody over there. What's your name? Oh my God. Warren police say that right now the drowning doesn't appear to be criminal, but that investigation is not over. A police chase that started in Austin Town, stretching several miles south into Boardman, eventually ends back in Youngstown with a deadly accident. The driver was suspected of robbing a Dollar Tree store on Mahoning Avenue. Police from several different departments, including Youngstown and Ohio State Highway Patrol, chased him all the way to the turnpike in Beaver before he turned back around and headed back towards Youngstown. The entire chase lasted about 15 miles until it ended with a crash on I-680 in the southbound lanes. 
The driver leading that chase was killed when his car clipped a semi truck. He was driving the wrong way on that freeway. The driver has been identified as 47 year old Stephen Mango of Hanoverton. Police are still piecing together all the evidence at the scene, which is why the southbound lanes are still closed. Like I said, we have to take some accurate measurements out here. We are going to have to reconstruct this crash. And at that point in time, once we're done, we will get the road reopened. Lieutenant Ross says the truck driver who was hit by the robbery suspect has no injuries. I said, I just missed getting killed. And I know it would have been a bad accident. Well, as you can probably imagine, it was a wild scene on 680 late this morning, especially with the suspect driving at high speeds going the wrong way. 33 News tracked down one of the witnesses to that chase. New, uh, 33 News anchor Lindsay Watson talked to her this afternoon. She joins us live in studio with her story. Lindsay. Good evening, Corbin. Well, as you just saw, a chaotic scene on 680 as that chase was happening this afternoon, but even more chaotic for the people who suddenly and unwillingly became a part of it. Pam Gretzinger was driving south on 680, heading into Boardman this afternoon to pick up lunch for workers at Brillix Industries when she saw flashing lights coming from all directions. Seconds later, a truck was speeding right at her. Hear her chilling account of what happened next. If I had moved one direction or the other, I don't know that he was going to move either. And I could only hope that he was going to avoid that head-on collision because right where I was, it was going to be a head-on. We were, we were wheel on wheel at that point, and it would have been a dead hit. Pam went on to say that it was one of those moments where your life just flashes before your eyes. Now, she also told me she's more than thankful for the police and that near miss that didn't get her any further involved in today's incident. We'll have more details on Pam's story and what she saw during that chase coming up tonight at 11. That's the latest for now. Reporting live in the studio, Lindsay Watson, 33 WYTV News. All right, thank you, Lindsay. We'll see you tonight at 11. A Youngstown man is arrested and a woman from Boardman is dead after a shooting in the middle of a busy road during rush hour this morning. It happened around 8 a.m. near the corner of Market Street in Indianola. Witnesses say the driver of a van crashed into the back of a blue Chrysler, pushing the car into the front of a building. When the two drivers then got out, witnesses say the man in the van pulled a gun as the woman in the car tried to run away. Shot her twice. She hit the ground and he walked right up on her and just fired at her. And I'm thinking, oh my God. And he dropped the gun, the cops said, drop the gun, he dropped the gun. Detectives say the shooting happened just as police got there. The victim died at the hospital. Late this afternoon, she was identified as 46-year-old Elizabeth Pledger Stewart of Boardman. The shooter is 59-year-old Dale Williams. He's in custody and could be in court tomorrow. Back in Trumbull County, a dead body was found in some woods in Bristolville. The property belongs to the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. Right now, investigators aren't saying if the body is male or female. Police are waiting for an autopsy to determine the cause of death. The body of an elderly man was found around noon today in a creek in Niles, right across from the Eastwood Mall. Someone passing by spotted that body and then flagged down police. The coroner and Niles police are investigating. They did identify the man and confirmed that he's not the missing man from Warren. There is a man from the area that family members here have tentatively identified him as the possible uh, person that we're talking about. Police don't know yet how that man died or how he ended up in the creek. Still ahead on 33 News at 6, today is World Elder Abuse Awar uh, Awareness Day. We're going to tell you how a local group is bringing attention to the problem. That story coming up in about 10 minutes. But coming up next, local business leaders looking for ways to forge new partnerships with companies in Israel. And after a crazy weather day, Pinpoint Meteorologist Ryan Halicki will have the details of what you can expect for tonight. Your hometown forecast is coming up next.